Right, more grammar. Who's this from? Looking for a name. Can't find one at the moment, but I'm sure I will. All right, so what it is, is adjectival phrases and clauses. So this picks up with what we were doing earlier. To discuss an adjectival phrase, you go back and say, do I know what an adjective is? A single adjective. Yes. So we said things like glorious or sunny or cool. An adjectival phrase, a phrase is a group of words that make some sense, but are not complete in themselves. So if you said a glorious meal, that would be a phrase. If you said in the sunny garden, that would be a phrase. Or if you said with cool hands, that would be a phrase. Now, an adjectival phrase must describe a noun or a pronoun. So if you look at the examples that I gave you, a glorious meal, let's say we said something like, my mother made a glorious meal. That would be a phrase. But the key word is a noun. So we would call that a noun phrase. In the sunny garden, we were playing. My mother made a glorious meal in the sunny garden. This would be a phrase, but it would be telling me where my mother made it. So this would be an adverbial phrase. And we've got my mother made a glorious meal with cool hands in the sunny garden. This would also be an adverbial phrase because it would be telling us how she made it. So if we're looking for an adjectival phrase, so say to yourself something like, um, young and lovely, uh, the girls, I don't know, walked along the road. What part of speech is girls? Which girls walked along the road? The young and lovely ones. So this would be an adjectival phrase. Now we come to an adjectival clause. How do we define a clause? A clause must have a subject and a finite verb. So, Eni, this is where you were asking about finite verbs. Maybe this is where you needed to know about the verb, is maybe you have also been asked to do clauses. So, a clause has a subject and a finite verb. An adjectival clause, quite logically, will describe a noun or a pronoun. So let us write a sentence. Have I been given any examples here to do? Okay, we've got the house which is very small contains a large family. The first thing when you are dealing with clauses is find the finite verb. So, Trini, are you trying this? There is a finite verb there.
and there is a finite verb there. Right, what did we say? We said a clause has to have a finite verb. So if we have two finite verbs, how many clauses have we got? If a clause has to have a finite verb, and we have two finite verbs, we have two clauses. Now, if we've got two clauses, either there's a full stop and the second clause begins, or we've got a conjunction joining the two clauses. What's the conjunction? Go looking for it. And we get which. Underline the conjunction with a wavy line. Put a round bracket in front of the which. Now, where does the clause that begins with which end? What goes with which? Read the sentence again. The house, which is very small, contains a large family. What goes with which? Which is very small. Close your round bracket. Once you've found your clauses, square bracket off everything else. Whatever's in your square bracket is going to be your main clause. So what do we have? The house contains a large family. That's in the square brackets. This is your main clause. Remember, the conjunction must be inside its own clause. You can't start, the house is very small. You, the which goes with which is very small. So we've got which is very small. Now, which word in the main clause is the which telling you about? It's telling you about the word that's right in front of it. It's telling you about house. If we were asked to pull this into two sentences, we go, the house is very small, the house contains a large family. This which is telling me about house and is actually replacing house. So it's a pronoun. And it's called a relative pronoun because it's a conjunction that links sentences by replacing one of the words with a pronoun. So which is very small is telling me about house. What part of speech is house? It's a noun. So which is very small must be an adjectival clause. And we call it a subordinate adjectival clause because it is, or dependent, some people call it a dependent clause. It's, it describes something else, and you can't just say, which is very small. I cannot say to you, who is here? Not a question, but a statement. It doesn't, you go, what do you mean who's here? My mother who is here is whatever. So, which is very small cannot stand by itself, so it is a subordinate clause. It's telling me about a noun, so it's a subordinate adjectival clause. Okay, I hope that that is clear. Right, let's just do another one. Um, all right, um, we've got the city that is the most populated is Johannesburg. Write it down. Mm. 
The first thing you do when you are asked to find clauses is find the finite verbs. What are the finite verbs? Okay, this is the verb to be. A lot of students forget that the verb is is the verb to be is a verb. So that's why with Trini, we looked at the finite verb and said the verb is a being word. Is. Is. Is is either the finite verb by itself or is going to be part of the finite verb. Is walking. Um, is eating. It's going to be part of the finite verb or is a boy, is a girl, is here. It's going to be the finite verb by itself. Right. Two finite verbs. How many finite verbs? How many clauses? That's a V. Every clause has a finite verb. So two finite verbs equals two clauses. Two clauses equals how many conjunctions? Right, go looking for it. What do you find? That. Underline that with a wavy line. Put a round bracket in front of that. Where does the clause that begins with that end? There. Square bracket off everything else. Everything that you've got in your square bracket is going to be your main clause. Okay, then the other clause. Which word in the main clause is the that clause telling me about? It's telling me about city. City is a noun. Therefore, this is a subordinate adjectival clause telling me about city. Okay, I hope that's clear, not as clear as mud. Right, now, how do you get asked this? In a number of different ways, actually. Um, what can sometimes happen is you could say, um, the man walked his dog who has a red car. And you can be asked, what is wrong with that sentence? So if we start with the usual, our finite verbs, two finite verbs, how many clauses? Two. Two clauses, how many conjunctions? One. Find it. Now, what have you noticed about the relative pronoun? It describes the word that comes right in front of it. That described city. Which described house. So, grammatically in English, the relative pronoun describes the word that comes right before it. So it's the dog that's got the red car. And that would be unusual. Okay, so what do they want you to do? They want you to say that this clause has been attached to the wrong word and needs to be attached to man. The man who has a red car walked his dog. And this is this is a home language question where they, they have given you the adjectival clause in the wrong place. So you can have a phrase or a clause that is misrelated or that is hanging. 
Misrelated is when it's attached to the wrong word. Hanging, when it's got no word to attach to at all. And they ask that in home language papers from time to time, where that clause is attached to the wrong thing. And you have to say, the adjectival clause must describe man and must be moved so that it's next to man in the sentence. Um, I'm not sure what else... Um, what else was sort of required? Okay, let me just look at the rest of these notes. So it talks about an adjectival clause um, acting as an adjective. Uh, they are dependent clauses, fine. They give you examples. Adjectival phrase, it says the adjectival phrase is the term we use to describe a group of words acting as an adjective without a subject or verb. And they say, okay, so they give you this example. Let me just show you what... I think this is from Jackson, is it? What Jackson has sent. He sent um, that school is full of hooligans. And this note says... This says that they feel that this is an adjectival phrase. So I'd really like another person who's good at grammar to see if this person agrees, because I'm not sure. Let me just work this through. There's my finite verb. I'm very happy with that. That school is the subject. I'm very happy with that. Now, is this bit here is called the complement. And I haven't taught the complement for a very long time. So let me just try to explain. If I say, I am Janet, the finite verb is am. The subject is I, but the object isn't Janet. Because Janet and I are exactly the same thing. So the, the verb to be doesn't take an object. It takes a complement. And notice I've spelt it with an E because it makes something complete. Now, they are saying this is an adjectival phrase because it's beginning with an adjective. It's full of hooligans. Yes, I guess I understand how they're thinking. So this is the adjective. The of hooligans is an extension of the adjective, and therefore it's an adjectival phrase. Yes, I'm with them. Right, but have I lost you guys? <laughs> okay, have I lost you? Um, Shall we just go back and try and see how we figured that one? Okay, that's the finite verb. Everybody happy with that's the finite verb? Is everybody okay? Who or what is full of hooligans? That school, that's the subject. Have I, have I got everybody? Okay, so if I said um, he is full, right, this is an adjective describing he. Remember we said adjectives describe pronouns and I gave you they are intelligent. This is the same thing. So this is an adjective and it's describing he, which is the pronoun. Is everybody okay so far? So if I said he is full of grapes, the of grapes is extending the full. It's telling me more about the full. Full of what? Full of grapes. So this is an extension of the adjective. So this whole thing becomes an adjectival phrase. Are you all with me? Right. So the school is full of hooligans. That's the adjective describing school. And full of hooligans is an adjectival phrase. This, who's doing this out there? Because this is something I, I haven't seen asked in exams. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that everything that you learn should be asked in an examination. I'm just saying that it is, that it is quite unusual, all right? Um, you had, the boy is incredibly smart. So let's do the boy. Okay, let's just extend this. All right, start with the finite verb, and by now you should know that is is the finite verb. Who or what is the boy? This is your subject. 
All right, so smart is an adjective, yes? Describing boy, yes? Descriptive adjective. Everybody okay? It's not an object. The boy, I said to you to find the object of a finite verb, ask who or what before the verb. So if we said the boy is who or what, we get the answer incredibly smart. But it's not an object because the boy and incredibly smart are the same thing. The verb to be takes a complement, not an object. Right, now, incredibly. Which word, let's change colors here, which word is incredibly telling me about? Is it the incredibly boy? No. It's telling me about how smart he is. So this is an adverb of degree. Yes? Because it's telling me how smart he is. He's incredibly smart. This is the key word in the phrase. It's an adjective. Therefore, this is called an adjectival phrase. All right, Jackson, that seems to be what you're asking, the difference between an adjectival clause and an adjectival phrase. You know something? We could half an hour ago have answered this very simply and said, a phrase is a group of words that hangs together, that makes sense. It's not complete, not a complete sentence, but it makes some sense. And if it describes a noun or pronoun, it's adjectival. And a clause has a subject and a finite verb. If it begins with a conjunction, and that conjunction tells you about a noun, then it's an adjectival, phrase, uh, adjectival clause, and we could have just sorted all of this. Oh, that was, that was actually quite, quite demanding. So this, this grammar, do I find it exciting? Yes, actually, I enjoy this enormously. I get excited about grammar, but I know that most of you don't. So when you are doing the grammar, have a look and see where in your papers this grammar is tested. And you've got it in paper one. Home language, your paper one is out of 70. FAL, your paper one is out of 80. You have a comprehension out of 30 and a summary out of 10 and an advert out of 10 and a cartoon out of 10, which is where we started. So in our end is our beginning. And then you have the language section, which for home language is 10 and for foul is 20. But remember, FAL, you can get language questions tucked in actually right through your paper, but especially here and here, there will be a grammar question, a specifically grammar question. Whereas home language, you tend to have these 10 marks tucked at the end and it doesn't interfere with the rest of the paper. So what I would suggest you do is, okay, something like, like this from Jackson. Yes, it's exciting and yes, I find it fun and um, looking at it, there are other examples about a guava being ripe when it turns pink and various other things. And yes, I would be very happy to do piles and piles of this. But I think for most of you, it becomes incredibly tedious, just amazingly dull. So what should you do? Go through past papers. So try to take the papers from 2019, there should be two of them. From 2018, there'll be three. From 2017, there'll be three. And go through question five. And it's question five for both of you. If we're not looking at the grammar that's tucked in over here, it's question five. And go through question five because all of the language, look at what we've done today. We've looked at verbs and adjectives. I mentioned adverbs. We've done nouns. We've done clause and phrase. We've done a lot of very basic grammar. But this will be only maybe one question in your 10 marks or one question in your 20 marks. I also managed to include a little bit 
of active and passive voice because that also get, gets asked. But it's also like one question. So what I think you need to do is look at what this examining panel has been examining. End of last year, middle of last year, the three papers in 2018. And go through it backwards. 2014, you know, 13, 12, however many you can find on the net. And go through those, those past papers and look at what they're asking and try to expand your knowledge from using those past papers. I think that is the best way. We could do adjectival phrases and clauses for another two hours next Tuesday and adverbial phrases and clauses for two hours and, 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 and I could do verbs easily for two hours because I never even talked really about the present and past participle and the gerund and the infinitive. So yes, we can do a lot of grammar, but in a way it's like, like almost too narrow, too, too much focus on one item, one aspect. So it would be better for you to see what what are they testing? Are they doing like one active and passive, one direct and reported speech, one homophone, one derivative? That's when give the noun instead of the adjective. And we did talk about that. I did emotive, emotion. Those are derivatives. Let me just put down derivatives. So we've covered quite a lot of grammar. But in fact, what we've covered this afternoon might not come up in that exam at all. So you need to do a practicing of a range, of as wide a range of grammar items as you possibly can. And the best place is by using past papers.